We're back. This is where you live with Gina Tony, and I think that's the eye of the tiger, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, man, that pumps me up. This is where you live with Gene and Tony. We're broadcasting from the Concierge Landscape Studios, and we're brought to you by Extreme Exteriors. It's time to hear from the Community Associations Institute. The CAI Minute is brought to you by Start to Finish Maintenance Contractors. Start to Finish provides 24-hour service for all of your home and business maintenance needs. Call Start to Finish at 952-259-1219, 952-259-1219 for your home, for your business, for your peace of mind. Are you a member of the Community Associations Institute? For nearly 40 years, CAI has provided education and resources to volunteer homeowners who govern community associations and the professionals who support them. Visit caionline.org to learn more. That address again is caionline.org. CAI helps community association board members by providing online resources, in-person training, and hard copy publications written by association management experts. CAI offers community managers professional development networking opportunities, and a certification program that's established as the industry standard nationwide. Minnesota has its own chapter of the Community Associations Institute to bring resources and tools from community associations around the country right to your home. Visit CAIMN.com to learn more and become a member of CAI today. Your community and management company will benefit from your involvement. Join the Community Associations Institute today at CAIMN.com and click on Membership. Now we're going to go through this last uh, uh, article here today about a real uh, ugly battle about a backyard play set. And uh, before uh, we get into uh, this uh, story here, I'd just like to remind our listeners, um, if you have a comment for us about this or any of our other stories that we talked about earlier in the show today, you have something that uh, you disagree or agree with us about, there's two ways of getting a hold of us. Uh, one would be uh, with our hotline, uh, the Where You Live hotline, 952-224-2668, and uh, we'll get those messages, play them on the air the following week, um, or get back with you in, in person as well. You can also email, uh, and that would be uh, my email is gene, G-E-N-E, at ncmgi.com. And we are inviting all of our listeners to come see us broadcast live at the State Fair. One week away when we when this a week is from broadcasting. Sunday. Yeah, a week yeah. from Sunday. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, Sunday, August 28th, and that's Sunday, right. September 4th, we'll be broadcasting from the AM 1280, the Patriot booth up on Machinery Hill, from 10 to noon. And we hope that all of our listeners... And our friends and family will come in and see us. Yes. And there's uh, some great goodie bags that are going to be given okay. away by the station. Uh-huh. You want to get that? And we're going to be giving away tons of stuff. You can also get Gene and Tony on a stick. That's right. And you can uh, get that only at the Patriot uh, uh, booth. So make sure you get that up on Machinery Hill. <laughs> yep. Well, let's uh, talk about our last uh, story here today. And this is uh, coming uh, out of uh, Flo- uh, Florida in, uh, I think, Orange County, Um, and it says there is a four-year battle that's been uh, raging with one community, and it says the issue of backyard playset. Carl and Cindy Seppala uh, live in Colony Community. It's a gated uh, association of 28 homes. They moved in in August of 2007, and they put a playset in the backyard for their three kids. It's a large wooden structure with swing slide for it. And there's a picture of it, a very attractive looking swing set. Looks, oh, yeah. looks very oh, nice. Yeah. It's timber built, yep. shingles on the fort. Yeah. Now, the uh, Sepalas are saying um, that uh, they are now being told by neighbors it's a monstrosity, and the Homeowner Association ordered that the place that be made smaller, claiming that the couple needed permission to erect anything. Before they just went ahead and did it. Again, this issue comes up. Yeah, so the association said, hey, you know what? You can do this, but you should have talked to us first so you could have put up something correctly. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they said uh, someone made a comment that when you see this in our neighborhood, you assume that there are a lot of loud, noisy children here, Carl said. (laughs) Uh, Cindy, uh, who has her own website called the Evil Playset (laughs) website, says it's a spiteful war with neighbors, and the Sepalas believe it's within their rights to have the place at the way it is in their backyard, 
And now they've hired an attorney to defend them. Cindy wrote in her blog or email uh, or in her uh, uh, website, she said, there are no rules uh, for the association in addressing play sets specifically. The closest thing uh, says uh, talks about recreational equipment that can't be placed in front yards. She said, all our board can say. She didn't say, notice, she never said, Tony, all the board did say. She, okay. So she's not quoting what the board did say. Okay. She said, all that I think they can say is that our play set is more visible and bigger than others. Uh, but neither of these variables are mentioned anywhere in the rules. She feels that it is uh, not a structure. And uh, furthermore, uh, they should be able to just continue to have it. She said, I don't, I can't imagine raising our kids in a community of people so intolerant of children. And so she <laughs> says she wants to move out. Oh, I'm as sorry soon to laugh. Possible. I'm sorry to laugh. But is that really what this community is saying? That we will not tolerate children? I don't think that's what the community is saying. The community is saying we will not tolerate a breach of our policies and rules which state you have to apply for approval before you put any structure on your property. Yeah. I, I'm guessing the architectural control committee. She never says that they abided by that rule. Um and she's being a little little over the top. A little over the top yeah. you think? Oh yeah. yeah, most uh most definitely. Um you know, I you're right. There's nowhere that is, and what's interesting, this entire story, you don't get one quote from anybody on the board. That's right. You don't get a quote from any neighbor. That's and right. It might, it's hearsay. And, and, and so it might be. So it might be the fact that this particular reporter is just going just based on just up uh, just on a hyped up uh, uh, sense of. Um, what the Sepolis here believe to be well, right, right or giving, wrong for the association. They're giving one, absolutely one viewpoint of the of the issue and giving it press. Well, I think it was very telling when uh, she had, uh, it was Carl, I guess, her husband, who actually admitted and said the association or didn't say take it down. They just said, make it a little bit smaller. That's right. So here you have an association that said, look, you did something after the fact. Uh, there isn't any talk about fines. There isn't, right. there isn't uh, the recourse of making someone take something down. And we see that sometimes. Sure. When some associations see someone do something incorrectly, they'll say, take it down. I, I remember I yeah. had a rental property years ago. And I did not think that changing out the bathtub was a major structural change. I called, okay. the, I called the city of okay. Minneapolis beforehand, and I said, hey, I've got to just change out the tub. I found another sure. tub that's in better condition. Sure. I'm just uh, undoing a few things, putting it in. Is that considered a major structural uh, change? And they said, if it's a major, uh, you only need to be concerned about a major structural change. And I said, well, is that one? Uh, they were uh, silent. I felt, okay, I went ahead and did it. Okay. All Shouldn't right. have done it. Oh. I later found out uh, because I had also gotten quotes from plumbers. Right. One plumber uh, called, uh, I think, and called me, <laughs> called, uh, called the city on me saying, I think the homeowner's doing the work himself. They came out. Even though the work was done correctly, yeah. the city required that I pull it out. By a licensed plumber, okay, who went in and then turned around and did the exact same thing and put it in again. Wow, wow! And then I had to pay two times oh. a, as a penalty. Sure. That, that was that was the city. There was no uh, forgiveness here, right? Homeowner associations could do the same thing. That's right. That's not done here. No, the HOA is not saying, "Hey, take uh, it down until we make our decision." Yeah, yeah, you know, which they could. Say they could. They're, they're say, please. We want to. We want to see some changes. We're not going to do some fines. That seems like a reasonable homeowner association to me. It sounds like that to me too. I, I, I have to laugh though about her exaggeration about this whole issue. Means that this community does not tolerate children. I, I think that's that's ridiculous. And I deal with comments like that from from residents 
quite a bit. All of a sudden, everything gets blown way out of proportion, and it becomes a global issue instead of just the issue in your backyard. Didn't you have something like that with parking? I did. I had a resident uh, new to the community who was parking three cars in front of the garage. We weren't aware of it. He was new. We hadn't heard anything from the association about it. Turns out he wasn't using his garage at all. And maybe it was temporary. He had it full of stuff. They had just mm-hmm. moved a couple weeks ago. So um, anyway, the association tagged his car and said, you can only have two cars parked in front of the garage. Well, he was really upset. Even though the association was very reasonable about it and very practical about it, said, no, we just wanted to bring it to your attention that that's not okay. So he he responded by saying, well, if I'd known I was moving into a community that <laughs> wouldn't let my friends and family visit me, wouldn't let me have any kind of social life because <laughs> they can't park anywhere, I would never have moved here. I will never recommend your company to any of my friends. Well... I think that was a bit of an exaggeration. I don't think the association was saying you can't have a social life here. In fact, the association specifically said there's parking available on the street, which is like 20 feet from your front door. 20 feet further away. But but they just want to ratchet ratchet things up. That's right. Uh, and that's, yeah. That's right. It's difficult to deal with people when the, when they take off on that tangent. Sometimes things would be a lot easier without people, wouldn't it? Dang. To deal with. <laughs> you know, that's true. But one one thing we need are the people that listen to this show. And we yes. want to say thanks a lot. We're at the end of our time. Everybody have a great Sunday. See you next week at the State Fair. Goodbye. How sweet it is to be loved by